Greetings friends. Today we're going to talk about growing your own livestock or producing your own meat. Now there are many animals that you can raise, chickens, cows, goats, pigeons. Personally, I like rabbits. For one thing, rabbit meat is very delicious. Two, rabbits are very, very easy to keep. You can keep them hid. You can have a small rabbitry that no one will know about. You can grow rabbits in the city where no one knows. I live in the city. I have a one car garage. In this garage, not only do I keep my six rabbit hutches, but I also keep my car and my motorcycle and a lot of other things in this one car garage. And that shows you just how little space rabbits take. I raise Florida whites, and I chose Florida whites because they are a very compact, little meaty rabbit. They produce a lot of meat per their weight. They're a smaller rabbit, so they can, uh, they can live in a smaller cage than some rabbits. These cages are cages I built myself. These are two feet by three feet by two feet cages. Um, I built the cages, but I did buy the hardware separately, such as this, this fastener and uh, the feeder and the watering system. Uh, here's a little tip for you. If you build your own cages, make sure that you make the doors open inward and not outward because I guarantee you there will be times when you will forget to fasten the door and if the door opens inward, the rabbits cannot get out. Underneath the rabbit hutches, I have built boxes for the droppings to fall into. I mix a little peat moss or a little garden soil in with this and mix it up. I also put earthworms in here. Earthworms absolutely love rabbit droppings and they will help break it down. Uh, rabbit manure is the best thing in the world that you can use for fertilizer. You can put it on d d straight from here onto your garden. Rabbit manure, unlike a lot of manures, will not burn plants and it is absolutely the healthiest and the best fertilizer you can use on any of your plants. And uh, once a year, this will fill up, and I will uh, clean all this out, and then I will put it in my garden, and then I will till it into the soil. Because my space is limited here in my one-car garage, I have my rabbit hutches one upon the other. I suspend them with this chain here. I have a board here. On a slant, you can see it better with this one perhaps, so that the droppings from this cage will roll down and fall into the bottom rather than on the rabbit beneath it. Uh, this uh, setup allows you to keep the maximum number of rabbits in the smallest amount of space. And uh, one thing I will mention is uh, these cages are all wire hutches. I highly recommend all wire hutches. Don't use wood. It uh, wood gets soaked in urine and it rots and the rabbits chew on it and the all wire hutches are the easiest to keep clean. They pretty much are maintenance free. They keep themselves clean. Um, it won't rot. The rabbits won't chew on it and it's a lot healthier um, environment for the rabbit to live in in all wire, all wire cages. To water your rabbits you can use a bowl but a bowl is very messy. The rabbits will spill it and they will also use the bathroom in it, make a mess. What is much better is a bottle like this hanging on the outside of the cage. On the outside the rabbits can't chew it up. But what I prefer is even better than this is this watering system which runs to a six gallon bucket that I have in the loft of my garage and these little brass fittings that I purchased allow the rabbits to um, drink directly from the tube. This is a lot easier, especially if you have a, a lot of rabbits. It really makes your job a lot easier. Here's a close-up of the watering device. The rabbits just lick it, releases water. All right, you want to make sure that your tubes do not come in contact with the cage because the rabbits will chew through this tube here. 
So they make these little devices here which clip onto the cage and hold the tubing away from the cage. These all metal feeders are easy to remove and clean. When you make your cage, you just cut out a hole and these feeders fit on the outside and make it real easy to feed the rabbit just by dropping the food right in here. And some of the hardware that I actually bought was of course I bought the watering mechanism so I don't have to use these. I bought the feeders, I made the cages um, and this little fastener here is very handy little simple device. Here's a close-up of the fasteners. Simple little spring device. Allows you to open the door easily, close it, and fasten it securely. If you want to make your own hutches like I did, it isn't hard to do. The main hutch is made with one inch by two inch hardware cloth. The floor is made of one inch by one half inch hardware cloth. You of course will need a good tool to cut the hardware cloth. You put it together with these little J clips. There's a J clip. There's a special tool that you use to fasten the J-clips. Here are the J-clips. Show you how you put them on there. Just like that. You will also need to make nesting boxes. Again, the instructions for this uh, can be found in any good book on raising rabbits. The uh, nesting boxes are made out of the same hardware cloth that you use for the floor, which is one inch by one half inch. And this is very important. On the hutches where you're going to put your females who are going to have the babies, you want to put a baby saver two inches, two and a half inches all the way around the cage. The baby sa saver is made out of the same material that you use to make the floor with. Here it is, you can see it right here, but um, when the babies are first born, if they happen to get outside or if the mother happens to have the babies outside the nesting box, which happens sometimes, the babies will fall through these holes right here and I've had that happen before and I've lost a, a whole um, batch of rabbits because they fell through these holes right here and that's when I learned the importance of putting these baby, this baby saver wire around the hutches where you're going to have your females have their babies.